apology because I declined to indulge in dishonesty. Right. All right, yes we are. We are here with some business people right now in this industry. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves? I'm Cassandra Spangler, I'm a music attorney. Diana Barnes. Oh. <laughs> Diana Barnes, I am a manager. Diana Barnes, weight management, I am an artist manager. Diana Barnes, weight management, I'm an artist manager. There you go. So, um, yeah, you've managed quite a few people, and um, I've met T.J. Evans, who is an amazing artist that you represent. And um, I interviewed you that was great. You enjoyed ourselves that night. We rocked out. Enjoyed it. Yeah, it was really fun. So, um, uh, yes. So, what brings you to the show right now? How long have you guys been working together? Are you? Do you consider yourselves a team? Um, I would say we're separate entities, but. She definitely, um, she's a part of my management team. I think any manager, you, you know, good unless you are either an attorney yourself or you employ an attorney. So we're separate entities, but she definitely, she's my attorney. She represents my company and my artists. And how long have you been doing this? I've been doing it on and off, in and out. I started as a tour manager back in the 80s, um, in and out for about 20 years. Wow. 20 years on my own. Wow. And um, how about you? I, I've been working in the music business in some way or another for about 10 years now. Graduated from law school a little over two years ago. So, so what do you find? Like, if people want you to represent them, like, do you, is there, like, a protocol? Like, what would you tell an artist that's looking for management? Like, what, what is, what is the time that they need someone? Or do you see someone and say, I want to manage you? Like, what's the, what's the criteria for you to, like, take someone on as an artist? Well, I take that as a two-part question. The first would be any artist that, if you are a solo artist, um, anytime, any kind of contracts, I, I believe at that point you need to employ an attorney at minimum to review your contracts. If you're a band, have a band agreement in place. You know, have an attorney draw up a band agreement so you don't have future issues. As far as submission, just make sure you have a presentable package. You know, your talent is one thing, but you want the presentation also. Right. Um, so submit your links to your social media pages, submit your music, your picture, your bio, just send me a complete package so we can have a well-rounded view. And I submit it to my team, so it's not just my opinion. I ask Cassandra what she thinks. Would you answer this? <laughs> yes, do you usually agree? I mean, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, TJ, we're both big supporters of TJ Evans, so you know, Diana represents some great artists, definitely. Yeah, so what do you feel like you give to your artists? Like, what when an artist comes to you, like, I know you give 100%. Oh, absolutely. You have I've spoken to a few of your artists, and every single one says that you make them feel like they are the only one you represent. And, and you have to. you got to remember the position that you're in. I right. am flattered and honored and humbled when you choose to share that part of your life with me. You know, and right. I'm, we're in a position where we actually not only know your career, we also know you as a person, so you spend a lot of time talking and dealing with them. And I tend to, my niche is up-and-coming artists, so I have a strong development um, aspect to my company, and that's my focus. So when they're new and it's overwhelming, you have to have team members in place, such as Cassandra, who's an artist herself. So I think that's, that's you know, when I see her counsel, it's just not at, from a legal standpoint. I want to know, would you sign this? Would you do this deal as an artist? Right. And she is an artist as well. So, um, you know, you surround yourself such as you. I knew who to call when I needed a really good interview. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, Rue, I need you. Aww. Um, and you did. You, you made TJ feel so comfortable because, you know, that was like a huge night for her. That was a huge night. And you know, the nurse is shocked. I yes. slept that night. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah, had a blast. Nobody would ever know. Absolutely. Except, you know, but that's usually the story with so many things. Like, what kind of art do you do as an artist? I didn't know you were an artist, Cassandra. I'm a drummer. Are you Sweet. really? Yes. Cool. Are you in a band or, like, have you been in bands? I am, yeah. I've been playing now for, well, since I was 12 years old. So, um,. So you're a kick-ass drummer. And she can sue you. <laughs> <laughs> and she can sue you. Well, thank you. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. I, I grew up listening to a lot of punk rock, so I was in a lot of punk rock bands growing up. Now I have a project called The Lost Tapes. You can find us on Facebook, but, 
Yeah, it's mostly just for fun at this point. So does Diana manage you? No, we're really not at that level yet. Not, yeah. I'm jealous. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I have to get past my jealousy point. I always want to be in a rock band, so since I can't, I figured I'd manage them. That's so cool. <laughs> do you feel that um, when you get to the point where you decide you want to do music just for fun, that sometimes there's a sanity in that, as opposed to pursuing it as a career, the actual artist side? Definitely. Does it sometimes make it easier to connect to the art? Because I, I went through that for a while. I had a deal on select records. And then I kind of, after 10 years, I walked away from it. And now I'm just starting, I'm kind of restarting again. And I'm trying to remember where I was as an artist before the business side even came into play. Definitely, yeah. And there, there's definitely, you know, in, in dealing with my own band, I don't take my own advice for that reason. Right. You know, advice that I find. It's just really just for fun, um, what we do. So it's a good balance when you go from this and then to have that. So are you looking for new artists to work with? And if you are, should they uh, you know, try to find you and, and submit you? Or do you find them? Like, because I know as an artist, I, people sometimes say, like, you know, when you're ready for a manager, you'll know. Like, some people think they want a manager before they're ready. Do you get a lot of submissions that, like, are just not ready? Or oh, do you absolutely. do you go no, after no. people that say no, like, that they don't want your help? Like, like how does it work? No, um, I, I'm very mindful about solicitations. I, I think you make somebody uncomfortable from that. I think you should appreciate the music first and become their fan first. Right. Um, you know, again, being a small firm as I am, to me, that's more important to have that connection. I, I really want to, since I work for myself, right. I have to like the music. And right. Then we can go from there. So how do you see yourself in five years? Like, what would you like to see as far as your art? Still artists? doing what I'm doing and taking them to where they want to go and going along for the ride, but definitely still doing what I so do. So have you had highlights so far? Like, like... Like things that are like yay, like something that makes of course. you like, I mean, TJ, yeah, like, yeah. TJ making a record with two celebrities that right. was huge, and yeah. that's about the time I brought Cassandra in, um, and I was like, hey, how you doing? Welcome to the team. By the way, you got to write these contracts with some celebrities. Um, so that's pretty much how that how that went. Right. Um, every experience, even this, is, yeah, you know, it's it's a beautiful thing. So if you were to tell anybody about Suede Management in in three sentences, what would you say? We're personable, we're conscientious, and you know we we really enjoy what we do, and right. we know. And what we don't know, I surround myself <laughs> with the smart people. That's smart. And what about <laughs> you? Like, like, where do you see you as an entertainment lawyer in three to five years? Um, I would like to see you know some of the clients I'm working with now, helping to develop them, and hopefully by that point they will be, you know, they'll have progressed in their career. Like that would make me. Like, what do you call progressed in their career? I'm curious to know, like, what exactly you mean as progressed. Like, what does it mean, like, they hit that dot and it's like they progressed? Like, what is it, you know what I mean? Well, what does it mean? I think it depends. It varies um, based on the artist, you know, what they're looking to do. You know, as you guys, as artists, I'm sure you know, everybody has different um, ideas about what they want to achieve. You think uh, the dollar sign has achievement attached to it? I think for some people it does, which is which is fine, you know, and for other people it's more about just getting their music out there to be heard by a wider group or, you know, just even dollar signs on the level of being able to support yourself just doing your music. Well, and to pay for your services, too. Like, you know, a musician can't just say, I want to just get exposure and not be able to pay you. So, like, mm -hmm. do you guys encourage income making things for the artists so they can pay you? Uh, absolutely. That, like that's, how? What do you do? It's, I would say that's probably more so my function right. than it would be yeah. your function, unless you chose to take on management on top of being an attorney. Right. You know, or people yeah, yeah. Um, I, what I tell people is an investment. It's like a house. It's like a car. It's like your career. It's right. an investment in yourself. Um, being an accountant by trade and education, I tell people, you know, you can write this off at the, whatever you invest in your career, you, as long as you're set up as a business, you can write this off at the end of the year. Right. You have to get to the point where the money that you're going to pay us, and we're both extremely reasonable, right. <laughs> considering you know some of the other people we work with in the industry, is as an investment and the time and the knowledge and the connections that we have. I you know I yeah. read simple contracts. I'm not an attorney, so I'd rather be penny wise than pound foolish. 
There's good. That's good. So, um, do you have any questions for these guys as, as business women or any musicians out here? Any questions? Yeah, I, I would love to hear your thoughts um, on what it's like being a woman on the business side of it. And I, and I know that that is, uh, you know, it, I, I've been in business for a while, and it's been a serious boys club at times. And, uh, you know, I remember as an artist when there were venues on radio or certain things that would not play my band because we were a female-fronted act. Um, there were labels that wouldn't sign us because we were a female-fronted act, and it wasn't cool at the time. So, um, which is hilarious because in any other industry, sexism is illegal. <laughs> So why is it legal in the entertainment industry? Um, do you feel that has changed, and how do you feel about that dynamic being a woman on the business end? Um, it's it has progressed in the last twenty years. There's yeah. quite a few of us, quite successful female managers in the industry. It is still an all boys club. Um, as long as you actually can hang with the big boys and use a couple of really big words that my boy teaches me, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know it's. Do you, at the end of the day, whatever your product is, yeah. put out a good product. In my case, my product are my artists yeah. and their uniqueness. And as long as they're happy, I can care nonetheless about everybody else. Yeah, Honestly. and like I said, I'll repeat it. I spoke to a few of your artists that you represent, and every single one says she makes me feel like I'm the only one she represents. It's a 24-7 job. And understand something, I balance a family. I am right. a parent. Because like, you're a mom. Family. That's exactly. right. And exactly. that's small child. All know. right. So now to sidetrack, you know it is National Vanilla Custard Day. Woo! And we must get a skeleton from each of your closets because that's the payback on being on Row and Who. And um, who wants to go first? I, I would say two, it's a two-part question. The first is, I'm so glad they didn't have Facebook during the 80s. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it is spring break. Oh, my goodness. Um, well, what'd you do? I can't tell. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm them. <laughs> up. No, seriously, it would have. I mean, girl, I had girls going wild and not know me. But um, seriously, we're in awkward positions. You know, being that we represent people mm -hmm. and what we may think was fun to us, you know, it can have an adverse. Of, you know, I love your question. Oh, no, no, no. I have a hundred answers. It doesn't matter. That, 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 you know, I'm going to get fired. So. Right, exactly. <laughs> okay, so that, that part, um, we all have skeletons. That's and, fine. you know, I, I'm a strong believer in, you know, let's leave it all fly. Absolutely. Stupid, what know? about when you were, like, <laughs> five years old? Oh, my, my brothers? Something? Oh, my God, I'm surprised you're still alive. Um, I was a really, really... I, Center of the universe, because uh, I have brothers and sisters, so and they're great guys. Thanks, guys, for keeping me alive. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Go dig oh, in your thing on the custard. Your turn. I mean, I'm I'm with Diana for the most part. Um, <laughs> just to be maybe just like on a general, very tame level. Um, like I said, growing up, I was a punk rocker, and so going to shows that was like the big thing that you know we looked forward to it every week, thing for the weekend. And some of the shows, you know, they would be 21 and over, 18 and over, or we'd have curfew issues, so it was always coming up with stories to try to get into the show or try to get around the parents and things. Those are always, those are some of my favorite.